It's Sunday, December 24th, Christmas Eve, 2023. This is what's going on Central Illinois, the Greater Peoria Public Affairs Program. It's a weekly check of charitable community events, organizations, and neighborhood goings on with me, Roxy, a production of Cumulus Central Illinois. And today, we welcome to the show Shannon Cox, the Executive Director of the Peoria Art Guild. Good morning, Shannon. Hi. Hi, Roxy. How are you? I am so good. I am excited to talk to you. First of all, I love the Art Guild. I love all things art. But there's something exciting, something extra special that uh, you're going to tell our listeners about. But first, let's talk about the Art Guild, what it is, and uh, how long it's been around, because it's been around for a while. A long time, yeah. 145 years to be exact. Wow. Um, It was founded in 1878 by a group of women who were uh, involved with Bradley University, and it bounced around a little bit. It was a part of Lakeview Museum at one time, and then there was a split, and... um, came the Peoria Art Guild, but it's been ongoing for 145 years. So yeah, we, uh, we've we been around a long time and made some huge impact on our, our city. Definitely. And I know there are so many amazing opportunities for the public. And I don't think everyone always knows that, but you have art classes for everyone. Yeah. All ages, all levels, there's something for everybody. So, yeah, we have some really great programs. And now we have a a new uh, second location out at Grand Prairie Mall, which has been really good. You know, the people that are out north and and they don't have to travel as far. So there's some great opportunities for uh, folks to take classes out there. A lot of kids' classes out there. You know, moms can drop their kids off and go shopping or go get groceries. And uh, they can have a little fun with some art and then they can come pick their kids back up. That's awesome. I had no idea. Yeah, that's new since the summer. So, yeah, we're excited about that. And then there's always uh, there are art shows, gallery showings from local artists, and um, it's it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, exhibits. Yep, every month we change out our exhibit at the gallery here at the Art Guild. Our um, art curators, John and Jeff Heinzman, do an amazing job setting those exhibits up, and um, we open them up on First Fridays, which First Friday is a big thing. Uh, People go around all different locations in Peoria and view different exhibits and art studios and such, and there's usually wine involved, and I mean, it's, it's just super cool, super cool to be able to meet the artist and see different mediums, and uh, yeah, it's really neat. And this time of the year isn't exactly perfect for the Sculpture Walk, but the Sculpture Walk is pretty amazing. And the Peoria Art Guild has their hands in that as well. Yeah, so this is going to be our second round of Sculpture Walk Peoria. Uh, We actually have the call for art out. um, And artists from all over the United States are applying to bring sculptures. You see those sculptures up and down Washington Street. And uh, in May, we will have an opening day on May 18th, to be exact. Those artists from around the United States will bring new sculptures in and set them on our street. And these sculptures will be going down in April, the ones that are on here now. And exciting enough, two of the sculptures that are on the street now are for, uh, are sold. Oh, All wonderful. These sculptures are for sale. So two of them have sold and will be staying in central uh, Illinois. And throughout the years since 2015, several of these sculptures have been sold and stayed in the area, local businesses and even some private uh, purchasers. But, yeah, it's super cool. Um So, yeah, that'll be exciting. A lot going on. Something else, uh, Shannon and I were talking off air. Very exciting because the uh, Art Guild has been around for 145 years. It's got a, a really rich history. And we just went through a global pandemic. And that was yeah. not the first time. <laughs> no, no. So long, it's a, it's a great story. We have a fine art fair that we do every fall. Everybody knows about that. And I have this, this great committee that's involved with it. And Dr. Dominique Fons uh, works at the School of Medicine. She is on my committee and helps provide first aid and things like that at the fair. And we had a conversation one day about the need for some art therapy or some arts outlets for her uh, medical students that are at the School of Medicine. 
And sadly, um, last year there was actually a suicide in one of the residents. Oh wow! Um, in central in central Illinois, yeah, it's a it's a hard hard thing to go through the medis- medical field uh, post pandemic, and they just have to keep going. They can't stop, you know. They right. can't rest, and they need some outlets. So we had this conversation. We met and talked about how what how this is needed, and how it doesn't just stop at you know resident physicians. How it's everybody in medicine and, you know, down the line to first responders and military. And I mean, let's face it, it's all of us, right? We've been through a lot. (laughs) So, you know, we started talking about having a a program, you know, how can we help with this? And um, we put together a, um, you know, a little list of goals. And then, you know, weird enough, like this is a serendipity thing that happens uh, to me in particular. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I had this uh, art therapist come walking into the guild one day and uh, asked the girls at the desk, you know, like, is there any way I can plug in here at the guild? Um, I'd like to be a part of, you know, some some therapeutic art resources or something. And so they gave me her name and I was like, wow, that's weird. <laughs> you know, how we were just talking about this. Right. And then come along and um, it wasn't too long after that, I got an email from Jennifer Johnson at the Air National Guard in Bartonville. And she's like, hey, like I need some resources for my airmen. You know, we've been through a lot. There's not a lot of resources out there. You know, it's the same old story. Like, is there any way the art guild could help? And, and so, you know, I'm like, oh, wow, that's really weird. You know, so I met with Jennifer and I loved her. She uh, has been part of the mental health profession and the Air National Guard for years. And so, you know, we start putting this team together and then, you know, organically, everybody starts coming to the table where we've uh, formed a coalition of sorts. And even a gentleman that is in um, our pottery classes, and he's been in our pottery classes for a long time, but I didn't know what his profession was. And he reached out to me and said, hey, I'm a psychologist at OSF. I'd like to be a part of this. I didn't even know it, right? So it just happened. And so then one day um, I was in my office and I start going through some old records. Uh, The Guard Guild has been around a long time. Uh, I found a box of records from the 20s. It it varies from the 20s all the way up to the 50s, but some old, old records. And I'm flipping through them and I find this little letter kind of clipped together, nicely, tidily put in in the records and um it was done by esther cohen it had esther cohen's marks on it you know and esther cohen is one of our founders yes she was a very important lady in in our organization and i go to start reading it and it's a handwritten letter by julia proctor white Whoa. Um, written i know right like this is crazy so julia proctor white she was born in 1875, was one of the founders of the Peoria Women's Club. She originated the, you know, Civic Arts Center, I believe, and it later became Lakeview Museum. Like, she's a big deal, you know. And sometime along the, the line, Esther Cohen found this letter, pinned it away, and now I have it. And this letter was written in the 20s, so like 100 years ago. Wow. Um, and I got goosebumps. Referred- I know. It's wild. It's so wild. And it's referring uh, to a program that she had founded with another lady whose name was Louise Bliss. And it was about using art to heal. And so, you know, I come across this and I'm like, okay, how many signs from the universe can we have? Um, (laughs) But it talks about the relation, the arts in relation to life. And this little pamphlet that goes along with it is written in a timeless fashion and it's talking about you know what is wrong with our world today it's talking about post-war you know this is world war one the pandemic had happened right. around this time the first pandemic in 1918 i believe that was and it's just talking about how we need to heal and how we can use the arts and how important it is and it's like this little four-page uh lovely written letter and document that was written by Julia Proctor White in 1917. And in the letter that she's writing to a lady named Mrs. Melvin, and I'm not sure who that was, but I'm assuming it had to be somebody at the Guild because we have it. Um, It says, you know, here's the program we had. Uh, Basically, when you're done with it, you can throw it away. (laughs) Um, 
nobody really cares, basically. Nobody, it's, it's disheartening that nobody is paying attention to this and how it could heal. And I mean, at this point, I have goosebumps because like she could have written all of this today. Right. And, and there's no dates or involved, you know, anything that's really specific, but referring to things, it's timeless. It's the same thing a hundred years later. You know, <laughs> I'm just like, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. So we start putting program uh, ideas together. And I had a generous donor, actually a couple generous donors um, that came forth with some, uh, some financial help for us to get started on this program. And um, we have actually our first session, or I don't know when I was, the first program set to happen next week. Um, on Wednesday with Peoria County Health Department. Uh, so it's aimed at, you know, the stress, high stress workforce, but it could be for anybody and it's going to be free. So we will, oh. we will, we're using art therapists as guidance, but we are not providing diagnosis, right? We're not doing that. We're just giving people creative outlets and trying sure. to make them understand that they can use this as a stress reliever, that creativity can help. And um, so, we're really, really excited. The the instructors will be paid, the supplies will be paid, and we were hope we're hoping that we can help make an impact on our local community in in so many different levels of empl- you know, employers will be able to reach out to us um and we can work with them to help them understand the importance of it. But yeah, it's it's really it's it's a became my new passion project and this coalition is really passionate about it and we'll be working with the air national guard and the resident artists at the school of medicine to start off with hoping to you know reach into our first responders and veterans and again it can go so far but really inspired by julia proctor white's letter and um you know we have some funds to get it started, but we're also, you know, looking for uh, donors and sponsors that might want to underwrite or help us with this program so that, you know, we can continue it and begin to heal our community. Absolutely. I'm talking with Shannon Cox. She is the executive director for the Peoria Art Guild. They're 145 years old, and she stumbled on this amazing letter from 100 years ago, and uh, they're implementing some of that with healing through the arts it is kicking off this coming week on wednesday you can uh, head to puriaartguild.org to get all the info but it's healing through the arts and you've got art workshops and i'm looking at some paperwork you sent me public art installations what's this all about so yeah we we have talked to uh in in particular, big picture a little bit oh, about love them. Um, working with them. Um, you know, as it will happen organically as people reach out to us to do these programs. But we also want to get past that stigma of mental health and stress, and you know, people are being embarrassed by it right. because it's nothing to be embarrassed by. And but and so you know, we're hoping to um, you know do some public art displays of some sort. Um, that will bring more um, attention and uh, recognition to what what we're all going through. So, yeah, we have lots of different goals. And so as people reach out to us, we'll ask them, well, what do you want to do? Like, how can how can we help with, you know, your your stress or, you know, your particular office dynamic? And um, yeah, we'd love to do some public art installations or um, or projects like that. Um, in the future. And as a nonprofit, the Peoria Art Guild does rely on fundraising and donors. So what is the best way if someone wants wants to donate to this cause or just the the overall Peoria Art Guild, what's the best way for them to do that? There is a link on our webpage at PeoriaArtGuild.org that it says donate here. And there are different ways that you can donate when you hit that button. It'll say you can send it to education or um, the fine art fair or sculpture walk. And, um, you know, you can always reach out to us and uh, call us uh, if you have any questions. But, um, yeah, there are different ways for you to to be able to allocate your funds. So if... 
an employer would like to maybe enroll their employees because this would be a great a great team building and stress reliever. Yes. Is that an option? Yes, it is. On our website at the, I believe it's in the education tab. I'm looking right now. I'm going to go there too. Um, yep. Under art education, there's healing through the arts. Oh, there we go. Yep. And there is a link there for them to be able to reach out to us. And um, Nikki Wheeler, our director of education, will reach out um, and be able to talk to them individually about what their needs are, what they want to do. And, you know, we can, co- we can do it here at the Art Guild or we can go to um, their facility or anywhere they want. We are, we are able to go mobile. Um, so um, we, yeah, there's lots of options and different things we can offer. We can offer pottery. Um, on Wednesday, we're actually, um, we are doing a project with the health department here with a, um, a local life coach who's going to do some drawing and talk about stress management um, and give them some some different outlets that they can do. Um, right, different try. options. Because, yeah, options. People don't understand that if you get into a creative mode, it really helps your, you know, you to escape a little bit. Right. And so you got to you got to find what you love. But once you do, um, it's very helpful. Now, Shannon. There are a lot of people that'll say, oh, I have no artistic ability. I can't even draw a stick figure. But it it isn't about the end result necessarily. It's about working through the emotions and putting it in, you know, getting it out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We all have it in us. You just have to find what you're, what you like um, and, and, and practice it, and it doesn't have to be, not everybody is going to be a fine artist, but we all have creativity in us, and we need to use it to our advantage. And, um, I mean, if you ever just pick up a, a crayon and start coloring, right? you know, you kind of, we all have done that, and you're like, oh, oh that's kind of fun, you know. It's soothing. If you really find something, yeah, it's soothing, and if you really find something you like, um, and that you can, you know, spend some time on to just get your, your mind relaxed. Um, it's good for all of us. Absolutely. It's Healing Through the Arts, a program, a new program with the Peoria Art Guild. I'm talking to Shannon Cox, the executive director of the Peoria Art Guild. And if somebody wants to just stop by the Art Guild, that is always a possibility, correct? Yes. Yes. That's a great point. You do not have to be a member to come to the Art Guild. You do not have to be a member to come to First Friday. You do not have to be a member to take a class. Everybody is welcome here. Membership is a perk, um, and it, and we love our members, and we would love everybody to be our members, but we understand that everybody can or wants to be our mem- a member of the Art Guild. But anybody is welcome to stop and look at the art and to take our classes and be involved with us. Um, we We – welcome everybody here. So um, yeah, there's really something for everybody um, in all levels. You do not have to be a professional artist or a good artist to be involved. So we, we welcome that. Anybody here? Well, this is very exciting. I love art. I am a frustrated artist. <laughs> but um i've always been a big fan of the peoria art guild thank you so much for uh resurrecting basically this idea from a hundred years ago like you said it's absolutely timeless and uh, it's healing through the arts shannon cox thank you so much for uh chatting with me today i'm excited to see where this goes and i look forward to uh, my next visit to the peoria art guild Oh, thanks, Roxy. I appreciate it. That was Shannon Cox, the executive director of the Peoria Art Guild. Check it all out, peoriaartguild.org. This is What's Going On Central Illinois, the Greater Peoria Public Affairs Program. It's a weekly check of charitable community events, organizations, and neighborhood goings-on with me, Roxy. Production of Cumulus Central Illinois. Now get out there and make some beautiful memories this week. Next Sunday, we talk to Alex Menke with the Stray Animal Midway Shelter, or as you've heard it, Sam's. And don't forget to do your best to be kind. 
to all kinds. That doesn't cost a thing, and it makes the world just a little bit better. And if you have an event that you would like to showcase on What's Going On Central Illinois, send me an email. It's Roxy, R-O-X-Y dot Baker at Cumulus dot com. Happy Holidays.